It's your turn to roll. The only thing that stands between you and your elfish bride is a snarling troll. You have the choice of three weapons. The crossbow, the staff, or the dagger. Which do you choose? I'm adding my Perfect. That's all we need. Like card oh, you can't put that there. Yes, I Where can. Yes, going. I can. Look in the guidebook. Look in the guidebook. Goblin impels you. The ring race strike back. Burst and burn! And the troll of darkness rules all. As you do. I attacked you, and that dragon is ancient history. Da, 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 da. sixes, and Legolas continues his noble pursuit of good, once again narrowly escaping the hellish hounds that guard the gates of Mordor. The open eye searches relentlessly. I can feel the fingers of its gaze, scraping the depths of my very soul. A foul odor is in the wind. Stench of treachery oozes from the eastern ridges of Galdadish. Drifting, drifting like the nightmares of a thousand witches. Oh. The only foul stench in this room is your Cheeto breath. And furthermore, any wizard worth his wand knows that the gates of Mordor are guarded by the fearsome two-headed snail. Once again, confusing folklore with your wizardry. Go. Blast! The dirty goblin's poison tipped arrow found a chink in my I, armor. I told you when we first embarked on this mission to wear the fairy feathered tiptoe undergarment of protection. As usual, you gave no heed to my counsel. Now your recklessness has cost you the use of your fighting arm. We'll need every mother's child that can wield a sword if we're to stand a chance against the dragon lord of Biltuk. Well. Luckily, back in the haunted Nipple Forest, I traded 14 rations of elf turd fuel for Gandalf's magic potion. I'll give Newell the magic potion, he'll get his arm back, and we'll all be on a merry wizard way. <laughs> That's preposterous! You can't just give away a potion. There are far too many variables to consider. What variables? Tis a wizard's noble right to choose where and how he uses his divinely appointed magical charms. True. However, those divinely appointed charms become negated when said wizard X, in contrary to the code of ethics found in the ancient scrolls, used to compile the unabridged special hologram edition of the Sorcerer's Guidebook of Spells. Thus, betraying the trust of our father Merlin. 
Didn't Father Merlin teach you never to contradict a grand wizard in the presence of his Padawan learner? If you have further qualms, they can be addressed in the weekly wizard council immediately following the proceeds of this chapter. If you had anything more to say than jumbled spells and hogwash, you might not find yourself chained to this barbaric, blundering, burned out, barn owl blob of boogers. Not yet. But go on then. Make your little puppet sing and dance. Flick his wand like a good wizard. Fill up his brain with fallacies and fouled up vexes. Anyway, as I was saying, Noel, it's important that you mix the potion with the hair of a berry. Berry. Uh, with the hair of a fairy. A and into the bowl. Skull. Of a skull! <sighs> anyway, the skull of a wizard has an. Furthermore, it's important that the lotion. Potion! potion. Oh! Shut up, you warthog! While I never. You are speaking to a superior ranking junior wizard! Superior in your skill? Or only in your own imagination? Oh, young squire. This is one wizard with which you don't want to cross wand. Consider your wand crossed out. Hm. Now that sounds like the cowardly whisperings of a challenge. You're damn right, that's a challenge! Hmm. Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. Scene, Jabba's palace. Princess Leia has come disguised as a bounty hunter to bargain for the carbonite in case Captain Solo's life. Name the little creature that provides comedic... Salacious crumb. Hmm. Willow Offgood, his trusty sidekick, humble farmer, peck, name immediately. Migosh. Take two legs of a bullfrog, blend it with the tongue of a turtle, then sprinkle three teaspoons of warlock dandruff. What does it yield? Simple. Only the most splendidly wonderful tasting, but atrociously accurately smelling specimen of orc dung this side of the end or moon. Scenario D and D Traditional magic series You've sloughed PE class because you're embarrassed to get naked in the locker room You've had exactly three quarters of a 20 ounce cherry Pepsi three fourths of a raspberry filled donut left over from last week's Lord of the Rings trilogy marathon and a bag of Fritos You have exactly 45 minutes to mow the lawn before your father comes home and cuts off your allowance thereby suspending your privileges to purchase essential magic cards. It's your turn to roll. The elfish princess Nashar is tied up and being tortured by Teklodorf's terrible troll toots. You have the choice of three weapons. The crossbow, the staff, or the dagger. Which do you choose? Very well. Then he true. D&D warrior knows that when dealing with pesky trolls, one must rely on the swiftness of the dagger. Wrong! Wrong! <laughs> Any wise wizard would know to keep his distance between he and his enemy by relying on the merits of the bow! Have you learned nothing from Legolas? I have learned one thing about the bow. When it's in your hands, anything and everything's a target, including Dumbledore's ass! Dare you be so presumptuous about that near fatal catastrophe at Hogwarts? Presumptuous? You accuse me of being presumptuous? You were in charge of the archers that day, were you not? And where were you? Faulting around with the Nelwins in a cave? You know damn well what happened to me that day in the cave. The trolls stole my medallion and my powers were lost. Stolen? Or lost by your own stupidity? I guarded that medallion with my life! It should have been your life that was taken, not the medallion. Merlin trusted you. Now the medallion has fallen into the odorous grasp of the Nelwyn. There were too many of them. Do you realize the danger of the situation for our civilization? Imagine Merlin's frustration. It was your obligation to defend the medallion from the infiltration of the Nelwins. Now Merlin's finest creation has been lost to annihilation in this final dispensation. You are in darkness, shadows, the dark side, enshrouded in the dark robes of the Emperor. 
burst and burn! Oh. And what of the fire pits of Tatooine? No! You sold your soul to Saruman. <laughs> Throughout the ages, empires have crumbled with one cowardly act. Fortunes have been made and squandered. Knights reduced to bawling babes with poopy britches on the battlefield. Liars enthroned with power. Scoundrels crowned with jewels. Persistent tubbies have somehow blinded the eyes of the finest females and now find themselves fulfilling their most wildest Japanimation fantasies. But you... You cheated at D&D! No! During last month's crusade through the Netherland of the Gnomes, we joined Fairy Ticklish in our happy wooded home for an evening cup of silly weak butt tea and panty waist wafers. Fairies do their work. waited until no one was watching. And behind our back, strategically placed the dice to read 11. Thereby landing your figurine upon the fire pits of Tatooine. But you conveniently came down with a nosebleed. You coming? Oh. Ah. Uh. Uh, never mind. We'll just bring you one. Okay. See you there. I decided to stay behind to finish the frilly French cuffs for my chainmail wedding gown. Uh, should the gods one day provide an elfish bride. There, alone in your evil desires, your turn to the dark side was complete. two eyes. I beheld your wickedness in that very moment of deceit and betrayal. <laughs> one by one. You toss their tiny magical bodies into a blazing inferno, then covered up your treachery by claiming that a flaming arrow struck the forest home of the gnomes. Oh, but I knew the truth. And now the spirits of a thousand murdered gnomes cry from the dust, begging for justice and revenge. Ooh la la!
So roll. <laughs> <laughs>